therefore affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the tr uh, tr truth. Thank you. I'll let the record show that the administrator answered in the affirmative. Okay. Uh, thank you for being with us. I know you're, you have a busy schedule as well, and we appreciate your, your time here. And it may just be you and me, so we, this will be uh, brief, probably. Um, but you got your five minutes. If you need a little more time, go right ahead. Following the pattern of my colleague, David Strickland, I watched him do the same thing. My apologies. Again, Chairman Jordan, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and discuss the FMCSA's efforts to reduce fatigue-related crashes involving trucks through the enhancements of the Federal Hours of Service Rule. The FMCSA is an agency of 1,000 employees overseeing an industry of more than 500,000 carriers and millions of drivers with a, with, a, with, an, with a workforce, 80 percent of which is across the country in the field, we are dedicated to our congressionally mandated mission to save lives by reducing crashes involving large trucks. We achieve this mission through a mix of enforcement strategies, rules, and tools designed to target our efforts on noncompliant carriers and drivers. We also use research and data analysis to improve overall industry safety. And our research shows that fatigue remains a significant factor in truck-related crashes. Many commercial drivers are still not getting enough rest and breaks under the current rule. Last year, 2010, nearly 4,000 people died in crashes involving large trucks. By the Department's estimates, approximately 500 of those would have been related to a fatigued driver. Each and every life is precious, and while it's hard to place a monetary value on human life, or families suddenly left without a mother, a father, a child, a friend, a sibling, or a colleague, we can estimate the economic costs of commercial motor vehicle crashes. Costs include property damage, cargo damage, bridge and road damage, vehicle damage, lost wages, lost productivity, workers' comp costs, medical, insurance, health costs, and the list goes on and on. These costs do not discriminate between safety advocate and small business owner. They impact everybody. In fact, a company with a 2 percent profit margin would have to earn an additional gross revenue rate of one and a quarter million dollars to overcome the costs, unexpected, unscheduled costs of a crash that would cost them up to $25,000 in, in, in costs not covered through insurance. Those are the costs of recovery for a business owner. There is no recovery capacity for a parent to overcome the loss of a child. The purpose of the proposed hours of service rule is to reduce driver fatigue and thus reduce fatigue-related crashes involving commercial vehicles. In developing this NPRM, FMCSA provided an unprecedented level of transparency and input from all sectors, safety advocates, small business owners, drivers, shippers, the public writ large, large trucking companies, you name it. We began by seeking input from our Motor Carrier Safety Advisory Committee a body that structured, was structured under safety lieu that uh, is, is made up of representation from law enforcement, from the shipping and trucking industries, from insurance, safety advocacy community, and labor. Using the input from the advisory committee, we set about holding five listening sessions across the country. This is before developing the rule, in order to gain as much input as we could in building the rule itself, the proposed rule. So the NPRM that followed relied upon the input we received, an extensive review of fatigue-related scientific literature, crash data, driver health and mortality information, and thorough economic analyses. The NPRM was developed using the principles of President Obama's executive order, which calls for us to use quantitative and qualitative cost-benefit data, public participation, user participation, and a strong exchange of ideas. Because we are still in the NPRM stage, I am somewhat limited in how detailed I can respond to some of the questions that may be asked. Um, but please rest assured that the final rule will be based on careful consideration of all the input we received, the additional data that were submitted to the docket. The draft final rule is currently under review at the OMB. So again, I just want to reinforce that I speak for all of the FMCSA employees across the country to say we are passionately committed to our congressionally mandated mission to reduce crashes involving trucks and buses. Together with our State enforcement partners across the country, we work every day, 24-7, uh, to fulfill this mission, fulfill the public's expectation for safety and safe travel. Our citizens deserve no less. 
So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be pleased to answer any questions you may have. And I'll be um, just, just brief as well. You said there were 4,000 fatalities um, in the last, last year. Last, last year you have record of uh, because of uh, truck accidents. 4,000, was that the number you gave? For 2010, 2010. Uh, our estimates, we continue, we collect crash data directly from our State law enforcement partners as part of our motor carrier safety advisory program right. or assistance program. And through that data, preliminarily, we are showing an uptick in 2010. We, again, crash rates are still uh, remain at historic lows, which is a, which is, which is a tremendous outcome, okay. uh, not even close to being low enough. Uh, but that is what we are showing preliminarily. For so crash rates are at historic lows, so you, and you said 4,000 for 2010. What, 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 Up, upwards of. What was, the, what was it in 29? What was it in 1995? Give me some so comparison. So 2009, I want to say 3,360 roughly in uh, truck involved fatalities. Okay. That is uh, a definite number. That is not some estimate. That is a definite number. That is our, that's our absolute number. And then for 2010, you said it is approximately 4,000 or is there a definite number? That it's, no, that is not a definite number. That is an estimate. And I okay. said it is approaching 4,000. Okay. So um, 3,300 is the number you gave for 2009 is a definite number. What was the definite number in 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago? Uh, it was closer in a high 4,000 range. I don't have that specific number, but I will certainly provide it to the committee. Okay, and then, um, but the trend has been down, or is it pretty level, or the, the trend? And I think you heard some of the prior witnesses indicate there's been roughly a 30 percent decline uh, in truck-related fatalities. Okay. We're still upwards of 75,000 injury-related crashes. And um, wh and what's that number like? Is that number the same? Same. That also has declined. Yeah, okay, which is very positive. And then you had the you, you mentioned 500 related to fatigue. That's yes. And is and how did you determine that? It's based on our our estimates of fatigue related crashes, which we feel, by the way, are an underestimate, derived from our large truck crash causation study, uh, which shows approximately 13 percent of fatal truck crashes uh, attributed to fatigue. Okay. And um, under the new rule, what does your modeling suggest will be the number, the, the overall fatality number and the number attributable to fatigue? So, so under this rule, certainly I heard a lot of talk from the prior uh, witnesses. We have got costs, we have got benefits. We have got, without the rule, we have got costs today uh, that uh, we estimate our approach $1.4 billion in cost to society as a whole uh, in, the, in crashes and uh, driver mortality, as, as in health. Uh, what we proposed under this rule, and again, there were two options uh, uh, in the rule we proposed, we identified uh, benefits that include uh, a reduction in deaths directly under the 10-hour option of approximately 49. And under the 11-hour option, I want to say it was about 28. And those are deaths specifically attributed to fatigue-related driving, uh, not all crashes and deaths related to truck crashes. So, so the, what you are saying is you go from 500 to what number next year? Well, again, uh, you are presuming next year the rule is in effect. We are still in a proposed rulemaking stage. So in the year in which well, whatever year, whatever year it goes uh, into effect. Let's let you know flash forward to a year when the rule is fully in play. And this is a proposed rule uh, under the option where we propose 10 hours of driving time, which was the uh, agency's preferred option. Uh, we would see a reduction, an estimated reduction in deaths of approximately 49. Okay. Uh, and under the 11-hour option of 26. And what was the other number? You, that you, what's your projection suggest on the on the 3,300 uh, fatality uh, number overall number? I don't have that. Okay. I don't have that. But we'll certainly follow up if we can uh, project okay. that. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for for coming today. We had uh, uh, I think a good discussion with our first panel, and because we have no other uh, members here, and I apologize, it's the nature of as you know uh, Congress's schedule that we didn't have more of our uh, members able to uh, to ask you questions. But thank you for coming. Well, if I might, just in closing real quickly, reinforce again, the purpose of this rule is to reduce fatigue-related crashes uh, involving trucks by reducing and uh, setting improved rest breaks and improved uh, uh, likelihood of rest uh, for, for commercial, professional commercial drivers. Uh, it is our obligation as a Federal agency uh, to strive towards uh, the safest operating environment possible for commercial vehicles. Uh, and protect the public. And, 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 and we feel strongly that the proposed rule uh, has us in that direction.
Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. You bet. Thank you. And we're adjourned.